Hey everybody, welcome back to A Matter of Life and Maiden, the podcast of the Beast. I am your host, Joe Labriola, and today, this is episode 33 of the podcast, we are going to talk about the news of Iron Maiden's tour next year. The Run For Your Lives Tour 2025 and through 2026. This is interesting because, you know, like the promotional material for it, I think this is like the first tour that they've actually showcased a two-year thing. You know, going back and thinking in my head, um, when they did Somewhere Back in Time, which was amazing, uh, they only did the, the original poster in 2008, and then 2009 they carried it over, and they had some dates later. Uh, same thing for the the other history tours and the and and the rest of the tours, even with Legacy of the Beast. You know they did like a separate kind of art for 2018, a separate art for 2019, and then COVID happened, so they didn't tour in 2020 or 2021. But in 2022, they did a different art for that too, because they added some of the Senjutsu songs in. But this is the first tour where they've had it like you know, almost a two year. They're they're basically saying, hey, look, we're doing this for two years. Because they didn't really tell us, even with Future Past, they were like, here's a 2023 set. And then they said later, yeah, we're doing this in 2024 too, and then basically just changed the color scheme a little bit for you know this year's tour. But this is the first tour promotional material for it that they're actually showing you, hey, look, we're doing this 2025 and 2026. You know, maybe I'm wrong, but I can't remember in recent memory, even going back, you know, 16 years to somewhere back in time. I can't remember them even announcing like a two-year, you know, tour schedule. They always did like one year at a time, and then would kind of announce it periodically. Hey, we're coming next year, and then they release like artwork and stuff later. So that's cool and that's different, and I think that's neat. As far as the tour is concerned itself, and like what they're going to be playing, I I was thrown for a huge loop and a huge curveball with this, and I mean I love it. I think it's awesome, but it was not at all what I was expecting. Um, they're playing albums. If you look at the tour promotional material and even the artwork I designed to kind of like mimic the actual tour promo they did, it's uh, from the Iron Maiden album, the first album, Up to Fear of the Dark. So I was thinking, like I said in my tour speculation a couple episodes ago, that because 2025 is the 50th anniversary and 2025 is the 25th anniversary of Brave New World, they were going to do stuff based around the new album and Brave New World, and that's what it was going to be, but I guess not. I mean, they threw they threw us a curveball, but, you know, what else to expect from Iron Maiden besides kind of tricking their fans and, you know, playing with their fans and giving us something we did not expect? I mean, this is completely out of the blue, like I said, way out of left field, a curveball, um, but I'm excited for it. I think it's really, really cool. You know, any Maiden... Anything that they do is awesome. You know, they've been, they've been killing it since the reunion, since they've got back together and become a six-piece. They've had these history tours and album tours, and every single one of them has been great. You know, all the way, all the way going back to, you know, Ed Hunter, um, Eddie Rips Up the World, Give Me Ed Till I'm Dead, those kind of tours that focus more on earlier day stuff. This kind of has that vibe too, but it's cool that they're going to Fear the Dark. And... Like what they say on the website, like Rod Smallwood said, Steve said, Bruce said, all the stuff, you know, they're going to be playing songs that they're probably never going to play again. And they haven't played in a long time or ever played. So I think we're going to see some stuff we've never seen before, and I'm really excited for that. With that being said, you know, I've been kind of watching a couple of videos here or there on YouTube. Uh, some some of the YouTube community and, and the Maiden fans uh, have been analyzing kind of like the tour poster and the artwork, and there's some obvious things you know that I've I've picked out too just from listening to the promo and the promo video and looking at the poster. They're playing Phantom of the Opera for the promo, so it's almost a guarantee that they're going to play the song Phantom of the Opera. They always play Iron Maiden. That's a guarantee. So they're probably going to play Iron Maiden. If you look really closely at the picture in the background, if you zoom in on it, there is like a little Japanese uh, daimo or um, shrine on the uh, on the right side of Eddie, if you zoom in. They might play Summon Steel from Peace of Mind. I think that might be a possibility. I think they're going to play Killers and Murders in the Room Org from Killers, and obviously Fear of the Dark. 
and they're probably going to play stuff from No Prayer. This is the first time I think, you know, they've played No Prayer songs in a, since the tour. So, the No Prayer tour. So I think we're going to hear some cool stuff. Now, the Eddie himself is kind of cool. He's not my favorite Eddie. He's a nice amalgamation of, you know, the first two records with post-Cyborg Eddie with, like, the Seventh Son look and the Somewhere in Time look. And uh, he has, like, you know, a tree growing out of his one shoulder to, for fear of the dark. It, he has the cybernetics in his fingers, so it's kind of like the Somewhere in Time, you know, wiry hands, and he has long fingernails. It's a nice mixture and, like, a composite and an amalgamation of the various Eddies from the original Iron Maiden album up to Fear of the Dark. So it's kind of neat. Is it my favorite? No. I don't think it's the coolest Eddie, but it's different for them. You know, they got to do something different. They've been killing it with all this stuff lately. And while I can't say I'm extremely let down that they didn't have a new album out, you know, uh, we talk about this all the time. Bands make money nowadays by touring, not necessarily by selling albums. I do think then, though, if this tour ends in 2026, I think then they may announce or release a new album. I think that's what will happen. We'll see. I think that's the case. I hope that's the case. But, you know, regardless, I'm super pumped and stoked for this. It's going to be awesome. And, uh, you know, I'm seeing them later this year for the Future Past Tour in Pittsburgh in November um, in 2024. And then hopefully when they come back in 2026, I get to see them one or two times again on this Run For Your Lives tour. Now, like I said, I kind of touched on what I think the set list is going to look like and what it's going to be. Let's talk set list first. I kind of talked about a couple songs. And I'm just going to go through chronologically from the first album to Fear of the Dark and basically just give my speculation on what songs I think they're going to play from every album. I think they're going to do at least one song from every one of these albums, and then I think some of them are going to get more. Some are going to get two or three songs. So, going back to the original Iron Maiden album, they're definitely going to play Iron Maiden, and i you know, 99% sure they're going to play Phantom of the Opera. I think they're definitely going to play those two. They might throw another song in, maybe Running Free or something like that, but it's definitely going to be those two, and I think Running Free. I, don't, I, I can't see them really playing anything else from that record. You know, it'd be cool to see Remember Tomorrow, but I don't think they're going to play it. I think it's going to be Iron Maiden, Fan of the Opera, and Running Free. It's going to be those three songs if they play anything from it. Running Free and maybe a given Iron Maiden and Fan of the Opera. So there's two songs. Moving on from the Iron Maiden album and the Killers. I think they're going to play Killers, the title track, because of the axe. And it's basically partially kind of like a recreation of the Killers album cover in a way. So I think they're going to do that. I think they're going to play Killers from that. And, you know, maybe Murders in the Room work. I think they'll play those two songs, if I had to take a guess. And, you know, just speaking of that, I feel like this tour is going to be based around, like, this kind of, like, horror and, you know, murder and killers motif because of just the name of the tour itself, Run For Your Lives. So I think they're going to play, again, from the Killers record, Murders in the Room work and Killers. And I think that'll be it. I don't think they'll play, they might play Rat Child, I doubt it. I think that might be a maybe. But I definitely think Murders in the Room and Killers are going to be played. Moving on to Number of the Beast. They're going to play Run of the Hills. That's a given. Run for your lives. I mean, they're going to play that from that record. They're probably going to play Number of the Beast as well. And then I think they're going to play three songs from this record. Now here's, here's where I think those two are a given. I think they're going to play, like I said, Number of the Beast and Run of the Hills. I think they're going to throw a third song in from Number of the Beast, whether that's How Would Be Thy Name or Children of the Damned or 22 Acacia Avenue or Total Eclipse or any one of those songs. I don't, I don't think they're going to play like Gangland or Invaders, but I don't think they're going to play The Prisoner either because they just played it on this tour. But it's going to be one of those other cream of the crop songs from Number of the Beast. Definitely, though, I think it's going to be three songs, and I feel like they're definitely going to play the title track and Run of the Hills. Moving on from Number of the Beast, we get to Peace of Mind. Now, here is where I think they're going to throw a curveball at us and play songs from this record they haven't played in a long time, or I don't even know if they ever played some of them. 
They did Flight of Icarus before on Legacy of the Beast. They're not going to play that. They did War Eagles Dare on Legacy of the Beast. They're not going to play that. I doubt they're going to play Revelations. I think they may play the Trooper, but I don't know. I think that's a maybe. I think that's a maybe. They might, but I think they're going to throw a curveball, like I said, and I think they're going to play Die With Your Boots On and Sun and Steel. So we've never heard them before. And I don't want to get my hopes up. I don't think they're going to do this, but to tame a land would be amazing to hear. I don't know if they're going to do it. I doubt they're going to do it, but it would be phenomenal to hear that song. That could be it. And, you know, maybe they'll just say, we're going to play Die With Your Boots On, and we're going to play something still. Or they might just play one big song and make it to tame a land, which is like a, you know, around eight minutes, seven and a half, eight minutes. So they could just do one from Peace of Mind. But I think, like I said, this tour is going to be fo focused on that like killerish kind of like murder motif. Die with your boots on. Perfect for that. Sun and Steel, it's about, you know, a samurai fighting for his life. Death is involved with that. Kind of a killer motif. So I think that could be the case. But we'll see. Moving on from that. Power Slave. Now here's, here's an interesting thing again. I think they're going to throw a curveball. Or not. I think they might play one song from Power Slave, maybe, and it might be a rhyme, because I haven't played it in a long time. They could just play rhyme, and that would be it. Or they might play, I think, the title track, and then The Duelist, because they haven't played that in a long time, or ever played it. I don't even know if they did, but I think we might see that. I don't think we're going to get Aces higher two minutes. They've played that, you know, on tours in the past. I think it's going to be, like, just newer stuff or stuff they haven't played in forever, ever played. So if they don't play Rhyme, I think we're going to get Power Slave and The Duelist. It's about fighting for your life, sword play, you know, that kind of stuff. So I think that's a possibility, a very good possibility. After Power Slave, moving on to Somewhere in Time, they just really heavily focused on Somewhere in Time with the Future Past Tour, so they might only do one song from this, or two songs from it. I don't know. If they do... Wasted Years is almost a given. It might even be part of the encore. If they don't do Wasted Years and they only play one more song from this record, it might be Sea of Madness. We haven't seen it for a while. It could be Sea of Madness. So that's a possibility, or maybe even those two. But I don't think anything else from that. They've pretty much played the majority of that record, all the good stuff from it, on Future Past. Moving forward, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. I don't know what they're going to play, but I feel like I'd love to see Infinite Dreams. It's, I, I've never seen it. They haven't played it in forever. I'd love to see that song. I hope they play it, and I think they might. Infinite Dreams, and then they're going to play The Evil That Men Do, just because it kind of ties in with the motif of you know people killing and that whole thing. The Evil That Men Do lives after them. That's kind of like you know Julius Caesar getting stabbed thing, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I I think that's a possibility from Seventh Son. Infinite Dreams and The Evil That Men Do. Maybe Moonchild. I don't think they're going to do Can I Play With Madness. They just played it on this tour, so I, I don't think that's going to be in there. I really do think, though, it's going to be The Evil That Men Do and then one of those other songs. Moonchild, and I'd love to see Infinite Dreams. I hope they play that. That would be phenomenal. And I think that's going to be it from Seventh Son. Moving on from that, No Prayer for the Dying. Again, I think this whole tour is based around killers and this whole concept of running for your lives and like running from a axe murderer or something. So Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter, I think, is a definite in this set list, it looks like. I think that's going to be the one that they play. They may also play the title track. Other than that, though, from No Prayer for the Dying, I don't really see them playing anything else. It's going to be either the title track or Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter, and probably those two, maybe, if they do that. I can't see them playing really anything else from the rest of the record. Then getting up to Fear of the Dark. Fear of the Dark is a given. They play it on almost every Iron Maiden show. So I feel like that's going to be a definite, the title track, Fear of the Dark. After that, looking through the rest of the album, you know, maybe Afraid to Shoot Strangers, potentially. Um, maybe Be Quick or Be Dead because that's a real quick rocker. And I honestly think it'll be probably 
be quicker, be dead, and fear of the dark. Out of those two, I can't see them playing the big afraid to shoot strangers. I think it's going to be be quicker, be dead, and fear of the dark, and that's still play. So in terms of like a tour, I think this is going to be like a set that focuses more on middle range rockers or shorter songs because they're covering nine albums. And if you figure on average, if you're playing at least two songs from every album, that's 18 songs. Their sets in recent memory have only been 15 songs. And before that, you know, they were 16 and 17 songs, you know, the five to 10 years prior. They were playing 16 or 17 song sets. You know, not that they didn't play a 16 song set with Legacy of the Beast. That was a couple years ago. You know, the first, the first couple of legs of it, 2018, 2019. It's kind of trimmed it down lately to do 15 songs. So like the 22, the Legacy of the Beast 22 uh, set was only 15 songs. And the Future Past Tour set is only 15 songs. Now, granted, these songs are longer too, though. You know, they're playing Hell on Earth. They're playing Death of the Celts. They're playing Alexander the Great. And they're playing longer songs. I think we might get, instead of getting three or four of those in a set, we might only get one. I.e., if they play Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, or if they play To Tame a Land from Peace of Mind. I don't see them playing any other bigger, really long compositions besides that. I think this is going to be, like I said, a nice kind of like shorter songs and like middle range rockers maximum and then maybe like one or two bigger songs but really i think one and i think that's either going to be to tame the land or rhyme like i said and that's kind of like my set list speculation as far as the eddie's concerned i think the walk on eddie is going to be probably you know maybe what the album cover looks like it's going to be a mixture of the old killers eddie maybe they'll make a new one They'll have him come out as a walk-on with the axe. I think that'll be, like, the centerpiece of the whole thing. And I think they'll also do, like, a Fear of the Dark Eddie. So it'll be, like, Killer's Eddie comes out, Fear of the Dark Eddie comes out, and maybe even another Eddie comes out. And then they're going to have the big backdrop for I made and the inflatable Eddie that comes up. And I think that might be, you know, basically the, the tour poster cover. It's going to be the hodgepodge face with the leather jacket, and he's going to have an axe, and I think that'll come up out of the back as the inflatable... So that'll be cool to see. And then, you know, two or three walk-on Eddies for different songs. I think Fear of the Dark Eddie might come out for Fear of the Dark this time around. Killer's Eddie might come out for Killer's this time around. And then who knows, you know, for for Family Opera, they might have an Eddie come out. They might have some different variations. But I, I think there's going to be three or four walk-on Eddies and an inflatable. This is supposed to be the biggest stage show yet. You know, for Future Past where they had, like, four eddies this is the first time ever that they had like four eddies on stage and they were doing like two and then three and now it's now it's four you know for future past they had cyborg eddie come out for caught somewhere in time um they had stranger in a strange land single cover eddie come out for a stranger in a strange land they had senjutsu samurai eddie come out for you know um some of the senjutsu songs iron maiden was a stratego big inflatable so We'll see what it looks like, but those are my speculations for what the tour set's going to look like. I think the stage set and design is going to be like a derelict city, kind of like what the what the promo poster looks like. It's going to be like a, a ravaged city with fire and stuff going on in the background, but kind of like a horror motif, and more in line with like the earlier day stuff, kind of like the original Iron Maiden cover and the Killers album, and that hodgepodge with the little other Eddies sprinkled in from you know their 80s catalog up to Fear of the Dark. So, I think that's what it'll be. And it's a nice mixture, because another thing, if you look at the tour poster, like, Eddie's hair is very reminiscent of, like, the No Prayer for the Dying Eddie. Kind of has, like, the No Prayer hair. So it's cool that they're tying that in. And, you know, I have never seen anything from No Prayer, so I think it'll be cool to see a song or two from that. You know, it's my least favorite album, but I think the tour is going to be really, really cool. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be neat. And I really do look forward to it. So, yeah, uh, let me know what your tour speculations look like, what your set list speculations look like, what you think about the stage set, what you think about the tour in general. Um, as I said, this is a huge curveball. I didn't expect this to happen. I didn't think it was going to happen, but it's very interesting. It's very neat. So I look forward to it. I think it's going to be cool. I'm excited to see Maiden anytime, whenever they're around. You know, if, if, they're, if they're close or if I can make it, I definitely want to go. So I definitely want to go see this tour. And then, uh, as I said, I think after this, in 2026, then they'll release a new album, which will be a five-year gap between Sanjutsu and whatever the new album is. I think they'll do a tour with that for only a year. 
maybe two, so that'd be 2026, 2027, maybe 2027, 2028. They'll do that, and then I think they're going to say, hey, look, we're done in 2030. I think they'll do two years of farewell tours in 2029 and 2030, and then that's going to be it. That's going to be it for Iron Maiden. That's my, that's my um, prediction, my speculation, but let me know what you guys think. Like I said, as always, thank you for listening to A Matter of Life and Maiden, the podcast of the Beast. I'm Joe Labriola. Make sure you guys are going out there and supporting Iron Maiden on the Future Pass Tour, and I know the tickets for the Run for Your Lives Tour go on sale pretty soon already. Over a year in advance for Europe, you know, again, I'm jealous because I cannot afford to go over there. I'm going to have to wait till 2026 till they come over to the States to see them. But I'm excited. I can't wait. Uh, up the irons. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you guys next time.